Hello, everyone. Pastor Deborah here. And welcome again to another wonderful, wonderful spiritual teaching video for you. This is going to be words of encouragement for 2024, number two. We're in our second week of January already. I do one each week for you because each time you watch, you grow. You learn, you become encouraged, strengthened with knowledge and truth. So here in this spiritual teaching video of words of encouragement for you, me, Pastor Deborah, who used to be a licensed clinical mental health counselor, trying to help you the way of mental health counseling. And now I am helping you the Lord's way. I had to learn what the Lord's way was and how to help you that way. It took me many years of study, experience, testing, trials, attacks, more study, isolation, questions and questions and questions, study more, watch more videos, read more books. I didn't live a normal life like you do. I was isolated. I was in a powerful revival that was global at the Brownsville Assembly of God Church from 1995 to about 2005. The evangelist Steve Hill had left in 2000, and I experienced the power of God, the touch of God, cleansing of God, seeing the manifestation of the Holy Spirit of angels and of Satan and the kingdom of darkness in people, around people, through systems, in church people, in a church, through the music, through the staff, through revival students. I had to see and I had to learn. I began moving in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the discerning of spirits, words of knowledge, words of wisdom. I had to increase my faith from a baby to a full-grown adult. took a long time. I got thrown in to help you the Lord's way. Now I'm out here on social media. I don't do all the social media platforms. I'm on the ones that the board of directors of this ministry want me to be on. I stay steady. Today is a Saturday. I've already done some editing. I'll record and then start editing this one. I'm using Zoom Pro with no green screen, so I might look fuzzy. Things might happen like if I point my hand and it disappears, or you see some of my background in my living room behind me. It's because there's no green screen there. I'm using a free motion video from Pixabay. This is to represent our soul and our spirit, but mainly our spirit. And I put this program, the video, through a video editing program called Wondershare for Mora. I'll add titles, transitions, music that's free, and I'll present it to you in a premiere on the YouTube channel, The Hidden Kingdoms. And I have two other channels called For Children of All Ages, which is for kids only, so it's a little different, and the Light of Love YouTube channel. Each one is has the same videos, but they are for different audiences. You do not have to subscribe to be a follower. Discipleship 
is in your heart where you decide that what I'm teaching is truth. You have confirmed it and you know that you're to follow me, which means listen to me. You take me as your spiritual teaching master, a teacher. And guess who all of our first teachers were? Our mamas. I'm a spiritual mother who is a shepherd, who is a warrior, a king. That's right. I'm a priest. I pray for you. I'm a mighty soldier that can go behind the enemy lines to reach to reach you, this guy, the forever person, hidden away deep in the soul of the biological body. I'm coming to you today so you can see and hear spiritual truth and light. Here in this word of encouragement, number two, the title of it is, Does Your Soul this represents your soul and your spirit. Boast in the Lord. It's a good question because we have to know who your Lord is. To know if your soul, that's that part of you in the biological brain with the chemicals, the neurons, the hormones. What and who does it boast in? And your forever person that's deep, hidden away in the realm of the spirit. So welcome to this number two words of encouragement here in January 2024 from me, Pastor Deborah. I always open up with prayer to get our hearts and minds ready to receive spirit and truth. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all those who are here today in the Spirit with me as I'm teaching this to them and those who will be watching this video later on for many years to come. We thank you for your Master Teacher that you have given all of us, the Governor of the Kingdom of Heaven, the Holy Spirit. Father, help us to hear Him, to believe Him, in the words that he is to speak through me, that you may reach out and touch the people all over the world with your voice, your words, your spirit, and your truth. Be with us now as we go through your words from Psalms written by King David. Let us hear what King David wrote. Let us hear you and your truth and light in the words that we may answer this question, does our soul boast in the Lord? Help us to understand what Lord means. Are you our Lord or is something or someone else? Help us as we go through this teaching today. In the name of Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God, sacrificed for all of humanity on a cross. In his name and nature and his agape love, amen. All right, we're going to read out of the authorized King James Bible. That's the one I use because there's no commentaries from any person or denomination. It is an excellent movie to watch about the King James Bible. King James was the son of Queen Mary of Scotland. She was Catholic. She was the half-sister of Queen Elizabeth I. And when Queen Elizabeth I died... She had no heirs. So her sister gave her son, James, as the king of Scotland, Wales, and England. King James had been raised up a Protestant by a masterful teacher who taught him the Greek and the Hebrew definitions of the words and left the interpretation up to the Holy Spirit. So when James came to England, he discovered there was two Bibles already in England. One was the Bishop's Bible. They were written by former Catholic bishops of the Catholic Church, poorly translated, with a slant toward Catholicism and the Pope. 
And then there was the Geneva Bible, written by people who didn't believe in royalty and majesty, kingdoms and kings. They had a lot of commentaries about jewelry and gold, that we shouldn't wear them, and it wasn't right, and we should be wearing just black and white. These were the precursors to Cromwell, who later came and killed one of the kings, and the pilgrims came over to America wearing black and white, and they established a religion based on their beliefs that there was no should be no king, no kingdom, no glory, no majesty, no jewelry, and everything should be plain and simple. Well, that's sort of a quick history. And uh, I use that version of the Bible. Believe it or not, I learned through my teachings that the enemy of the Word of God owns many of the Bible translation companies, and he twists or leaves out maybe one word or changes it. So you do not get the right translation. So I use the authorized King James Bible. I have many of them because I've worn them out. And we're going to go to Psalms. And it was written by King David, the second king of ancient Israel, after King Saul. He was a psalmist, a poet. He was a warrior. In his youth, he was a shepherd over his father's sheep out in the fields. He wasn't that good looking. But he was faithful to his father's sheep. He stayed out in the fields at night. He fought off the bears, the lions, the tigers. And he had a relationship with his God, the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Israelites. When he was out in the fields, he went after God's heart, trying to become a man like God. He sought God in prayer and solitude. So he was picked to be the second king after King Saul had disobeyed the prophet Samuel several times and lost his anointing. When you lose the anointing of God, sickness and disease comes in. Evil spirits have a right to come in because you have no protection. So King Saul was having attacks by demonic spirits and they heard about this young boy named David who played a harp and would sing or speak or say psalms, songs. And it would quiet down King Saul and the evil spirits would leave. So David was chosen after King Saul lost his anointing. King Saul knew it and he started attacking young King David. But once David became king, he wrote a lot of psalms. And we want to listen to him here in Psalms 34, 1 through 4, to help us answer this question, does your soul boast in the Lord? Verse number 1, I, King David, will bless the Lord at all times. The word Lord means owner, master, one who I should get on my knees, my face, who owns me, who bought me, who takes care of me, who protects me. So David already had a great description of this God called his Lord. Even though he was the king, God, King David was submitted to another, an unseen king, unseen God, an unseen Lord. Can you say that about yourself? I, King David, will bless the Lord at all times. What that means is no matter what happens, you go, I am thankful to you, Lord. You're a blessing to me. If something bad is happening, you're watching over me. Maybe you have arranged the attack. Maybe you are at work. But I will not speak against you. I will bless you. I, King David, will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Your biological body has a mouth which reflects your soul. But inside your soul, you could be many different people 
We call it disassociation. You could have many different identities. And you could be hiding many secret things in your soul. And your spirit, your forever person, has a mouth in that realm. So God is listening to your spirit to see what its voice, its mouth, who it's blessing, and if praises are coming up to him. Verse number two. My soul shall make her my helpmate. Boast and praise in the Lord. At that time, King David did not really understand that he had a forever person, a spirit being. But he's trying to say to us that my spirit shall make her my helpmate, which is our soul of our biological body, boast, praise in the Lord. To understand what that meant, you have to go back into, further back into the Old Testament and see the birth, the creation of the helpmate, the wombed man, the woman. Our spirit is to be the king of our soul, which is God looks at our soul as a female. And I want to relate a truth that I got. When we see in other religions that the female's hair is to be covered, or she's to be covered in head to toe with clothes, so not to have her exposed to other people, what that is really referring to is that the soul of us, our thoughts, our desires, our concepts, are to be covered by our spirit, our spiritual nature, our spiritual armor, our spiritual righteous robes of righteousness are to be covering fully our soul, protecting it, guarding it, giving it clothes of righteousness and beauty. And it is always to be the king of our soul, the ruler, the one that our soul listens to, bows down to, is our spirit. Our spirit, the forever person, is to be submitted to the Most High God's governor, the Holy Spirit. All of this is supposed to be going on on the inside of us, in here, in our thoughts, in our mind. That's right. And our spirit is to praise the Lord. And then that praise is to be filtered down, transferred to our soul, so our soul can tra- can speak it out of our biological body. The humble, that means the soul part of us, the helpmate, shall hear this from me, the forever person, the spirit. My soul, my helpmate, That hidden person of the biological brain and of my physical body and my soul will be glad. What we're learning, there is a relationship between our spirit and our soul. Your soul can boast of other lords. It can be submitted to other things, other gods. It can boast in politics, money, reputation, fame, but not the Lord. So we're learning a deep thing here, that we are a physical body that has a soul connected to it, to the five senses. And yet above the soul is the spirit, who's supposed to be the king, the husband, the protector of the soul. It is a male-female relationship, sort of, between spirit and soul. The soul was created to be a helpmate of the spirit through the biological body. The spirit, the forever person, was to be submitted in obedience and duty to the master teacher, 
the Holy Spirit, who lived inside of the forever person, who was the governor of the kingdom of heaven. A lot is going on and was supposed to be going on on the inside of us. So when these two parts of us, our spirit and our soul, come together under the Holy Spirit, both the spirit and the soul will be glad and they will boast in the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of the Lord. Lord means owner. So we have to learn a lot to be encouraged. Verse number 30. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Now that's the spirit speaking to its own soul within the biological body. And it is the spirit speaking to other spiritual men, forever persons and souls and other people. And let us exalt, that means lift up, give praise and glorify his name, his nature, agape love, his image, his likeness. And let us glory in him together. The Spirit is calling others to join him. There's been many a times my soul is depressed. It's under great attack. It is sad. When it looks out in the world of men and what's happening. And my spirit has to come to it and say, Soul, helpmate, woman, we're not going to sit. And I'm not going to let you sit in this depression. Sit in this worry and stress. Come with me. I'm your protector. Come with me into the presence of the Lord. And you will be glad, refreshed. So my spirit as the husband must take the lead and help my soul. My soul is going to get depressed when it looks out into the world through the biological eyes and hears through the biological ears and see the wars and the bombings and the killing, the trafficking and the abuse, and the traumas. My soul, the female part of me, the helpmate. And that can have many disassociative identities within it due to trauma and abuse. It's a mess. But my spirit has to be strong. It has to be one with the Lord. It has to be able to hear clearly the Holy Spirit. It must be able to receive spirit, knowledge, and truth, and light. Sort of like what you see in this picture. Stuff has to be downloaded, transferred into the spirit, the forever person. Then that forever person has to be strong enough, old enough, mature enough, and say to itself, its soul, its helpmate, come with me into the presence of God. We're not gonna let I'm not gonna let you sit here. We're going to get comfort in the presence of God. I've done that many, many times. King David talks to us about it. He had to do it. He'd say, oh, my soul, why are you so downcast today? Let's go into the presence of the Lord and rejoice. You have to learn how to do that with inside of you, or else your biological body and your soul will control everything. You'll make decisions from it, maybe out of your disassociative identity disorders, maybe out of your fear, out of your loneliness, out of your pain, you'll make decisions for nations and people instead of out of your spirit. I'm working now with a young crown prince. He's a grown man, got children, but when he's in my presence on the Lord's, he's about an eight-year-old child who's had lots of trauma. And he needs lots of healing. And we start back there. 
Then there's others that are just even babies and infants. Just getting born. And they need lots of mama loving. So that's what I do. Besides recording for you. So let's keep going. Verse number three. I sought, I sought the Lord. I looked for him. And he heard me. The forever person and its soul. The helpmate. For the Lord is a spirit and is seeking to be known and worshipped in truth and knowledge in the spirit and by the spirit with a transformed soul. So we are learning the forever person has a soul. That's the part most of you live in. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, till you go to sleep. Many of you, your spirits are leaving your body, doing other things. The Lord himself of King David and of Pastor Deborah is seeking our forever person. He wants our forever person, our spiritual part, to know him in spirit, to worship him in spirit, to have knowledge and truth of him here in our spirit. That's where it goes first. Then the spirit transfers that intimately to the helpmate, the soul, the biological brain, inside a dirt body. A lot of work supposed to be happening on the inside of us all the time. But most of our spirits, our forever persons, are in trances. They're in hypnotic states. They're asleep. And they're not awake. And it is only our soul that is getting knowledge from the world through the biological senses that is shaping and forming our soul and its ideas and concepts. So my job is to help you, the forever person, wake up, grow up, be healed from your trauma, be your mother, be your master teacher, guide you, so that you can learn yourself from the Holy Spirit when you're old enough. When the Spirit gets strong and it can transfer all of its information to its helpmate in an intimate relationship of a husband and a wife, and the soul will listen to its spirit. Then what will happen is the words of spirit and truth that the spirit, the forever person has learned, knows intimately. He will spiritually deliver it to the helpmate, the soul. And both of them will be delivered from all of their fears. Takes a lot of work to get here. Takes a lot of knowledge and truth. Being under a master teacher, a lot of healing in both areas must occur. Verse number four. I, my soul, the helpmate of the forever person, I sought and searched for the Lord. The soul must go to the husband, the spirit, and say, help me find him. Please teach me. Help me to know the truth. Because my biological body and all that it sees and touches and hears is so loud and powerful. 
I know no other truth but that. So help me, husband. Help me, forever person, to know the truth. Sit with me. Teach me. Tell me what you have heard and know. Communicate with me. So the soul needs to understand that that is what it needs to do. That it is a helpmate to the forever person. And it needs to search for the truth from the spirit. And when the soul does this, the helpmate, it will be able to say, the Lord heard me and is delivering me through the spirit. And the helpmate will be delivered from all of its fears. You don't understand how fearful the soul is. Fear of loneliness. The trauma and abuse it has seen and been exposed to. The disassociative identities that are in it. And it needs help. And it is the spirit, the forever person, that must grow up and arise and become a faithful and protective husband, so to speak, over its own soul, its helpmate. But if the forever person, the spirit part of us, does not wake up, grow up, mature, learn from the Holy Spirit, is not born again as a new creature in Christ, then it cannot help its own soul. And our soul turns to the ways of mental health counseling, to wellness, and not to our spirit, which has turned to the words of knowledge and truth of God the Most High, the God of King David. So our question to you in this word of encouragement number two for January 2024, does your soul, your helpmate, boast in the Lord? A lot of you do, but not your spirit. See, your soul can be religious, attend church, pray, and it's all considered flesh. It's not from your spirit. God's looking for your spirit, not your soul. He's looking for the king of the system, the forever person. He's looking at the king, the forever person, the spirit part of you, to be awoken, be mature, be sitting under master teachers like the Holy Spirit and Pastor Deborah, growing and maturing to become the ruler of its territory of spirit, soul, and physical body. If he looks and he sees your forever person asleep in a trance, an infant, then he is not happy. His heart is sad. Because all that is alive and living is your soul that is created through the five senses and all of the abuse and trauma experiences that the biological body has been a part of. That's not what he's looking for. The Lord is looking for your spirit to worship him in spirit and in truth. Then he expects the spirit to grow up and be a king and a warrior, a protector, a husband. So it can help its helpmate. The pattern was set back in Genesis. Everything is for the spirit. The spiritual part of us, the forever person, is to be a wise and mighty king. First to have rulership over its own self. Then its soul then its physical body. And then it can reach out to the other people, to the other worlds, to other nations. We are three in one. We are a physical body. We are a soul of that physical body, a hidden man of the heart. And we are a spiritual being, an eternal part of us that lives on after death. God's looking for that one. 
That's the one God's words are to. The spirit part of us. God is a spirit. And he is looking to feed you and nourish you with spiritual truth to your spirit man, the forever person. He's trying to grow us up spiritually. So then we can help our own selves, our souls. He's trying to build a system, a kingdom within us. And we have to study each part. What's a king? What's a helpmate? What's a husband? What's a woman? The flesh takes the covering of a woman's hair as a physical responsibility of a religion. But it's been twisted and perverted. What that means is that the soul, the physical body, is to be covered with the spirit of truth. The spiritual part of us is to be our covering of the soul, the man, the husband, the protector, the king, the warrior, the forever person. He is really a non-gender being, but he's to have these characteristics. The helpmate, the soul, was to help him in this earthly world. The spirit man doesn't have direct contact with the earthly world. He works through the soul and the physical body to express release and speak through the soul, through the physical body. It is a delicate system that's gotten all out of whack. So my job is to help you study each part and help you to put it back together and get back as you're supposed to be with the right pattern of spirit, soul, and physical body all submitted under the Holy Spirit, the spiritual master teacher of the kingdom of heaven. The first kingdom to conquer is the spiritual part of us, the forever person. Then that part of us helps our soul, protects it, speaks to it, transforms it, and gives its truth so the soul can help the physical body out in this world. So you be encouraged. You're not alone. There's a big helper called the Holy Spirit, the master teacher, even a Pastor Deborah. There's a mom out here for your forever person, me, Pastor Deborah. I understand trauma and child abuse, mental health counseling, pastoring, ministering, spiritual teaching, and many other things of the Spirit. Been around a long time, still working, still reaching out, reaching into the darkness where your forever person is. First, we start there. And that person will be different than the soul of the biological body. I might have to deal with many identities of yourself, many parts. They call them multiple personalities. It can be in your spirit and your soul. All in one body. You could have other things that are not of God in there. Evil, wicked, spiritual things that have to be dealt with. They may have taken over your spirit. You may be in a trance spiritually. But I'm here. And the Holy Spirit is here. And God's a Copy love is here, and we're going to help you, if you will let us. So that is your word of encouragement. Do a self-reflection and ask yourself, does your soul boast, praise, glory in the Lord of King David, the Lord of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Lord of the Israelites, or of something else or someone else? And I'll see you again next week on another word of encouragement for you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are at work. That your words are still alive and living and bringing forth fruit unto you. You sent them forth and you desire them not to come back to you void, but filled with fruit and life. 
Father, this is your work, your ministry. This is your heart's desires of Isaiah 60, 61, and 62. This is your heart's desires of Genesis 1, 26 through 28. For all of humanity in every generation. Father, help us to study. Help us to grow and learn spiritually the truths we need to know. Help our spirit, our forever person, to become the husband, the protector, the provider of all things to our soul. And for our soul to take the proper place as a helpmate to the spirit. Help us, Father, in all areas of our life. For only you can do that through your words of spirit and truth, through your Holy Spirit, through the cross, through your great agape love. And we thank you for your being about your work to bring forth your children back home to the kingdom, back into the family of God. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Okay, see you next week on another word of encouragement here in 2024. Bye.